Hugh Edwards was one of the most trusted faces in news and current affairs in the UK. In their millions, the British nation watched as he anchored the biggest news show in the country for over 20 years and anchored some of the biggest events in our modern history, including being the first news presenter to announce the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. But then, in the summer of July 2023, bizarre stories and speculation started circulating in the tabloids and online. Over the coming days, a strange scandal developed, and as most scandals do, it involved sex and power. At the time, it was thought that Hugh Edwards had behaved inappropriately and immorally and had abused his position of power, but had done nothing illegal. Many well-known names sprung up in his defence, but that belief would be shattered when it was revealed this week that Hugh Edwards had been charged with making indecent images of children and today pleaded guilty, facing up to 12 months in prison. This is the shocking true story of how Britain's once most loved newsreader became embroiled in scandal and ended up being convicted of a serious criminal offence. This is the rise and fall of Hugh Edwards. Hugh Edwards was born on the 18th of August 1961 in Bridgend, Wales. After time at Cardiff University, he quickly entered the broadcast world, joining the BBC as a news trainee in 1984 and becoming the parliamentary correspondent for BBC Wales in 1986. Just a few years later, in 1994, Hugh Edwards became the host of the BBC Six O'Clock News. During this period, this was the most watched news programme in Britain. In January 2003, Edwards became the main presenter of the 10 o'clock news on BBC One, the corporation's flagship news broadcast. He presented this show for over 20 years. Hugh Edwards was instantly popular with viewers. His calm, warm persona were a perfect match for delivering the news headlines each evening. His career quickly branched into other areas of broadcasting. He led the BBC commentary team at the opening and closing ceremonies of the 2008 Olympics, 2012 London Olympics and 2014 Commonwealth Games, as well as hosting live the UK's general election coverage. He appeared regularly on celebrity shows in the UK, cementing his place as one of the most popular and trusted TV personalities. He was also one of the best paid at the BBC, earning over half a million pounds every year. In what would be the pinnacle of his news presenting career, on the 8th of September 2022, Edwards announced the death of Queen Elizabeth II. A few moments ago, Buckingham Palace announced the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. He later presented the BBC's coverage of her state funeral on the 19th of September. He was the biggest star in UK news. He was trusted with the biggest stories and became the face and voice of some of the most important moments in our collective history. And then, on Friday the 7th of July 2023, at exactly 9.30pm, things took a dramatic turn. The Sun newspaper published a story that would start a revelation of immoral behaviour and eventually reveal serious crimes and abuse. The story stated that a top BBC star had been paying a teenager for sexual pictures. They said that the well-known presenter was accused of giving the teen more than £35,000 from when they were 17 in return for explicit pictures. The son had been contacted by the parents of the teenager, saying that the star had hundreds of explicit photos of their child, which had been used to fund a crack cocaine habit. The mother of the child said, When I see him on telly, I feel sick. I blame this BBC man for destroying my child's life taking my child's innocence and handing over the money for crack cocaine that could kill my child. The family said they complained to the BBC on the 19th of May, several weeks before they contacted the Sun newspaper, and they say they begged the BBC to ask the TV presenter to stop sending cash to help protect their child's spiralling addiction. The parents say they approached the Sun and took no payment for the story because they didn't feel the BBC was taking their complaint seriously. The mother said, All I want is for this man to stop paying my child for sexual pictures and stop him funding my child's drug habit. Holding back tears, she said, There were huge sums, hundreds, thousands of pounds at a time. One time he sent £5,000 in one lump. 
The money was in exchange for sexually explicit photos of my child. Incredibly, the mother says that the BBC star made no attempts to hide his identity, even sending pictures of himself at work to the young person. Most crucially in all of this, explicit messages are alleged to have started in 2020 when the youngster was 17 years old. If true, this is not only an abuse of power by one of the BBC's biggest stars, but is also a criminal offence, as it is illegal to exchange explicit photos with anyone under the age of 18. This would amount to child sexual abuse. These are incredible allegations from the Sun newspaper, and at first the Sun doesn't name who the presenter is. Perhaps for legal reasons, or perhaps because they know the public will do the work for them. The internet is alive with rumours. Thousands of people start a witch hunt and speculate over which BBC star it is and begin to name them on the internet. Several high-profile presenters are forced to publicly state that the allegations are not about them, such as Nikki Campbell and Jeremy Vine. Over the weekend, the frenzy spirals, and more and more presenters are forced to declare that they are not the accused person. The BBC is on the front pages of all the newspapers, being criticised about what action it had taken following the original complaint. On Sunday, the 9th of July, two days after the Sun story first came out, the BBC issued an update to staff and the media, explaining the complaints and how it had handled them so far. It also confirmed that it had suspended the presenter in question. And then the next day, on Monday the 10th of July, with the presenter still officially unknown, the story takes a bizarre turn. In a dramatic turn of events, on Monday evening, a lawyer acting for the teenager involved issued a statement saying that his mum and the son had made false claims. The lawyer said, For the avoidance of doubt, nothing inappropriate or unlawful has taken place between our client and the BBC personality. The allegations reported in The Sun are rubbish. The young person's parents responded by saying they stood by the claims. By this point, the BBC are under increasing pressure to name the presenter involved in the scandal. The BBC meet with the police, report the matter to them, and discuss how to progress the investigation. Hugh Edwards is at this point still not known officially. His name has not been released because of concerns about defamation and potentially breaching his privacy. Although it is becoming something of an open secret. It's common knowledge at the BBC and across the press that the presenter in question is Hugh Edwards, and now there is just a false veneer of secrecy as still none of them report the name. And then, a day later on the 11th of July, matters escalate further. BBC News is contacted by another young person who says they have received abusive and threatening messages from the presenter in question. The individual, in their early 20s, was first contacted anonymously by the male presenter on a dating app. They chatted to the presenter on the dating app for a while and then moved on to other platforms. They say they were put under pressure to meet up, but never did. Later, the young person alluded online to having contact with a BBC presenter and implied that they would name him at some point. The presenter, who we now know was Hugh Edwards, reacted by sending a number of expletive-filled, threatening messages. The younger person said the messages were intimidating and left them feeling frightened. BBC News verified that the messages were sent from a phone number belonging to Hugh Edwards. On the same day, The Sun revealed that Hugh Edwards had also been messaging a 17-year-old teenager on Instagram, including sending love hearts and ending messages with kisses. Another article followed swiftly later, which said that he broke lockdown rules to travel and meet a 23-year-old. He later started sending the person cash to their PayPal account and sending semi-naked pictures. Meanwhile, some of Hugh Edwards' colleagues at the BBC, all significantly younger than him, also came forward, saying that they had received inappropriate and flirtatious messages while they had been at work from Hugh Edwards. A picture was beginning to emerge of creepy, inappropriate behaviour. But crucially, at this point, nothing illegal. And a day later, on the 12th of July, officers at Scotland Yard said there was no evidence of any criminal activity. They said, 
Detectives from the Met Specialist Crime Command have now concluded their assessment and have determined there is no information to indicate that a criminal offence has been committed. Hours after this development and after a weekend of noise and scandal, the nation become aware officially of who the mystery BBC presenter is when his wife, Vicky Flind, publicly names Hugh Edwards for the first time. In a statement, she says, I am making this statement on behalf of my husband, Hugh Edwards, after what have been five extremely difficult days for our family. I am doing this primarily out of concern for his mental well-being and to protect our children. Hugh is suffering from serious mental health issues. The events of the last few days have greatly worsened matters. He has suffered another serious episode and is now receiving inpatient hospital care where he'll stay for the foreseeable future. Once well enough to do so, he intends to respond to the stories that have been published. At the time, this announcement and the revelation that Hugh Edwards had been hospitalised due to poor mental health following the story put a different angle on the scandal. Many people developed sympathy for Hugh Edwards. And as the police had dropped the investigation, and it was clear that at that point there had been no illegal activity, some people wondered what exactly was all the fuss about. We now know there was no illegality. So what are you left with? Someone's private life has come under scrutiny, who is now unwell. I think it would be a crying shame if this is the last we see of Hugh Edwards on television, when the allegations have turned out to be not that much. And I think all his friends will just be wishing him well at this stage because Hugh commands huge respect in this industry. This would later be revealed to be a massive misjudgment of character. Once the police had completed their inquiries and closed the case, the BBC launched an internal investigation into Hugh Edwards' conduct. And after that, it appeared to everyone that the scandal had died down. And even perhaps after a short break, Hugh Edwards would make a comeback. But what we know now is that the Met Police were actually continuing their investigation into Hugh Edwards during that time. As part of their investigation, they seized his mobile phone, and it was here where they made a disturbing discovery. The police found that, via WhatsApp, Hugh Edwards was in possession of 37 pictures of indecent images of children. This included six Category A pictures, the most serious classification of indecent images. The police continued their investigation into Hugh Edwards for several weeks, going through his personal belongings. Meanwhile, the BBC were unaware of these official investigations, and on the 27th of Feb 2024, they published an independent report on their handling of the original Hugh Edwards complaint. A month later, on the 22nd of April 2024, the BBC announced that Hugh Edwards had resigned on medical advice. However, we know now that he had in fact been investigated and arrested for making indecent images of children. And then on Monday the 29th of July, the CPS announced to the public that they were charging Hugh Edwards with 37 accounts of making indecent images of children. Just a quick note on the law and the terminology. Under the Protection of Children Act 1978, causing an indecent photograph of a child to exist is considered to be making an indecent photograph of a child. In other words, a person who either downloads images, prints them off or shares them further, for example on WhatsApp, is classified as making them. This is because the Act is not only concerned with the original creation of images, but also about the proliferation of child abuse images. Under the Act, anyone under the age of 18 is defined as a child. And today, Hugh Edwards appeared at Westminster Magistrates Court, where he pleaded guilty to all of the charges. He will be sentenced in September, and could face up to 12 months in prison. The children's charity, the NSPCC, released a statement saying that these offences have a devastating impact on victims, and that we should be in no doubt about the seriousness of Hugh Edwards' crimes. His barrister, Philip Evans KC, told the magistrates that Hugh Edwards has severe mental and physical health conditions and will be requesting a suspended sentence. So now, looking back at this whole sorry saga, since the scandal first broke, to us becoming aware of these serious criminal charges, and now with Hugh Edwards guilty, what can we learn from reflecting on all of this? It is now clear that Hugh Edwards was a predator. He used his status, fame and power 
to form relationships with teenagers and young men, some of them vulnerable, sending them money in exchange for explicit pictures. He became threatening and abusive to them when they threatened to expose him, threatened to tell the public the truth. He acted completely inappropriately at work, sending creepy messages to much younger colleagues. And so looking back now, it is clear that the warning signs were there. And now it is up to the BBC to answer questions about its internal procedures and safeguarding, about how Hugh Edwards was able to behave in this way. Most seriously, Hugh Edwards was in possession, indecent images of children on WhatsApp. Some of these the most extreme and serious images under the law. And we should be under no doubt that it doesn't matter if Hugh Edwards didn't directly abuse children. Having possession and proliferating the creation of this material is child abuse. And so what started as a tabloid scandal ended up with a serial criminal offence and one of the UK's most respected TV presenters, Career in Ruins, and facing jail time. Hugh Edwards joins a long line of TV stars revealed to be predators. Rolf Harris, Jimmy Savile, Chris Denning, Max Clifford. And so when reflecting, it is essential that all media organisations have a culture which ensures that inappropriate and unwanted behaviour can be spotted and called out immediately, and where appropriate, reported to the police so as to try to prevent this list of TV star predators growing any longer.